Hey guys, how are you? So, I'm downtown Montreal. I figure I'd do a new type of vlog today. A vlog on the road. One of the things I like to do is move around, go around with my bike at lunch. Easier to bike around town than to drive because of all the construction. So the question of this vlog is, um, are certain languages superior to other languages out there? People are always asking about programming languages or wondering about which ones are better. Short answer, it depends on what you want to do. You gotta remember, each of the programming languages were created for a particular job in mind. And so you have to take that, you gotta take the languages in that context. You have to understand that. Also, languages were created in a particular time, whether they were created in the early 90s or the 70s or the 60s, the languages were different based on the hardware at the time. So for example, very early languages like C, um, they had to be extremely efficient in terms of the utilization of the resources. The computers were really very weak at the time. Whereas later on where you see the creation of Java, Python, PHP, Ruby, they didn't need to be nearly as efficient in terms of uh, the hardware that they required, the memory, the RAM, the CPU, etc., so that they could run because the computer is just much more powerful. So they were built for a different time in terms of the hardware. So you have to consider that as well in terms of programming languages. So the big question is, in today, in 2018, is there a superior language or a superior set of languages that programmers or budding, aspiring programmers should learn. I'm going to get into that in the next set. Well, I'm going to get into that when I get to the my next, my next location. Bye-bye. People who know me know I love convertibles. Now, one of my convertibles is an Audi, and my other convertible is a Norco. All right, so I bike to my next location, a little bit closer to home. I live in the core of the city, but not in the center core. I live right on the mountain, so it's uh, lots of greenery. Here's a park that's nearby. So, let's get into the subject at hand. Is there a particular programming language that is superior to all others? Uh, the bottom line is no. Each language has its pros and its cons. Each language is uh, very good or exceptionally good at one particular thing or the other. Yes, there are times when languages will fall out of favor, like Pascal, Lisp, and there are others, VB. And, uh, but that is uh, becoming less and less of an issue. You're seeing a lot of the current most popular languages out there. They've been very popular for quite a long time. So you look at Python, which is like 20 years old, Java, JavaScript, C, C++, um, SQL. It's a, it's a fourth generation language. It's not a quite a, it's not a programming language, but it's definitely a language, um, coding language. Generally speaking, you can't go wrong with any of the modern languages that you see out there today. That said, I think for a, a lot of the newer jobs, I think JavaScript is big, I think Python is big, for corporate jobs, Java, C Sharp, uh, and there's several others. And, you know, people are going to be complaining, what about Swift? What about this? As I said, each language has its pros and its cons, and that also includes the type of work or the work you're going to do. So the first thing I always tell people is when you want to get into software development programming, the first thing you got to do is learn your foundations. Now, I teach the foundations with Python, JavaScript, SQL, PHP, and I teach what some people would characterize as the meta of programming. I teach everything around the languages, the big picture, because the quickest way to becoming proficient in any programming language, or all programming languages really, is to have a good understanding of the basics. That's something I discovered in my own career as a software developer. When I ran into problems where I didn't understand something or a concept, typically, well 99% of the time, the reason I had trouble understanding something or resolving a bug that I had is because of lack, some lack of understanding I had in some core fundamental concept or technique. So that's why I emphasize the foundation. So you learn your foundations, number one, and then 
with that foundational skill and knowledge, you, you have the eye, you have the trained eye to be able to judge which language, which environment is best for you, depending on the type of coding that you want to do. So the next thing that you do is you look around at that. You got your foundations down, then you look around, and you say, okay, what kind of programming do I like? Do I like mobile web development, mobile development, mobile development? Do I want to get deep into AI? Do I want to get into game programming? Uh, these things may sound good or bad to you from the outside, not knowing anything about coding. But once you get into learning your foundations, then you're going to be able to make a real decision with regards to that. You're going to understand what it really is like to be a game programmer, what it really is like to be a web developer. Finally, next thing you got to do is you got to look at the local job market. You may think that Swift coding is the best thing ever, but if there's no iOS development jobs for you, then what's the point? Not dissing Swift. Swift is a really good language, but you just have to look at the job availability in your area. One of the things that pisses people off is that they find out that PHP is actually quite popular. One of the things that surprises a lot of people is they find out when they actually go out there and look into what are the job opportunities, they find that the web stack and they find PHP and they find WordPress is hugely popular. And again, I'm not pumping PHP claiming it's the best language uh, since uh, buttered toast. I'm saying that there is a lot of opportunity in PHP and I think it's going to be a continued opportunity because a lot of developers are wrongly taught that PHP today is like PHP was 10, 15 years ago. A lot of people think that the flaws that PHP had during PHP 3 days and PHP 4 days, they exist now even though we're at PHP uh, 7. Big changes. It's like Mac OS. If you looked at Mac OS in 1996, it couldn't multitask, you had to restart the computer, you wanted to launch new apps. And if you judged Mac OS according to what Mac OS was like, you know, in 1996, of course you'd have a pretty poor opinion of Mac OS. Same thing with Windows. If you judge Windows 10 versus Windows uh, Vista, and you said, and you just looked at Vista and said, well, Windows sucks. You wouldn't be getting a right picture because Windows 10 is so much better than Vista. PHP 7 is miles better than PHP 3 and 4 and PHP 5 for that matter. And PHP, and PHP 5 is pretty good. Now, again, I'm not here to pump PHP. I'm just trying to put a little reality into everybody's brains. PHP has its place. It's the most widely used server-side programming language that's just the fact of the matter is small businesses are built on PHP. It's part, a big part of this legacy, a big part of it is Drupal, a big part of it is WordPress. So the opportunity here, and I'm talking not technical um, attributes of the language, I'm saying the opportunity with PHP and knowing PHP and willing to learn PHP, first of all, you're going to find that it's actually a very powerful language. Second of all, because you're going to be one of the people out there who actually wants to do PHP, there's probably going to be a lot of job opportunities for you since everybody's enamored of Python or JavaScript or C Sharp or Swift or something. Those are the those are the hot languages today in terms of nerds, but in terms of business, there's still a lot of opportunity with PHP. Now, I'm not saying drop everything to PHP. I'm just, just again a little bit of reality. My channel is a lot about uh, you know some people said the meta of programming. I'm trying to teach you the big picture. That being said, I have Python courses, JavaScript courses, and I've written software myself in Java, I've written C Sharp code, I've written you know, several other languages as well. So, again, I want to bring something that's different to the YouTube community, and that is this big picture, this two decades plus experience as a professional developer. Hopefully, you find this video useful, and I hope you like this, this format, just to give you a little bit of a tour of the city. A little bit different from taking videos from my office or from my apartment. All right, we'll, uh, we'll talk soon.